I first met David Akers as a kid in 1974 at uh, New York Gina Coin Show. Uh, we used to be held at the Sheridan. We'd have this coin show in a dungeon, basically. It was downstairs in this horrible facility that was very small and cramped, but it was a great show. And um, I met him there because he was, at the time, he was the buyer for Paramount. And I was a kid, and, and David was another one of the great people in the coin business, that when he saw a kid that had a great interest and, and a talent or a knack, he embraced them and uh, would show them the way, so to speak. So um, I met him as a kid, and he was, at a very early age, a mentor to me, would always talk to me and always teach me. Um, you know, as I got to know him, I, I learned his story, that you know, Vietnam veteran, he was one of those lieutenants that was always leading out, which explained, you know, a little bit of, he was a tough guy, yet he was very, very soft in his own way. Uh, but he was very, very bright. Um, was an incredible numismatist. And the thing that I respect the most about him as a, as a coin guy is so many of the old school guys from his generation, they knew rarity, they knew coins, but David was the first one, more so than anyone else, that understood quality, which is what the whole coin business has evolved into and what it's all about. David always had the eye to buy the very best quality coins. And when I would see him at a show, he, I would always come up with some really great coins and he would always buy my gem quality coins, which at the time he seemed like he was paying a lot for them. But in fact, he was getting fabulous deals because he recognized something at the time that other people had no idea about. So, I mean, he was a renaissance man in that regard. He understood quality at a time when, when most coin dealers pretended to or talked about it, but he always understood it. That's why he was able to put together those incredible collections like he did for Dr. Steve Ducker that proved over time that his eye was, was what made these things so valuable. I mean, we're in Philadelphia, so it's a great place to compare it to because we have the Barnes Museum. And there was a collector of, uh, of art who bought Renoirs and, and artists that people scoffed at at the early turn of the 20th century that turned out to be worth billions, literally billions of dollars. And David Akers had the same kind of foresight and eye when it came to rare coins.